The weight of chainmail, like these Renaissance players are wearing, sent it to rust on history's scrap heap. But thanks to a new fiber, soldiers could wear modern chainmail, super strong but light, flexible, and wired too. At the University of Texas at Dallas, nanotechnologists say they have spun the toughest fiber ever known. It's not breaking. It's beautiful. As fabric, it could be made into some useful garments. A vest for a soldier, which would be anti-ballistic, but the, at the same time allow the soldier uh, a new power source, a, power, a source of electrical power in the vest that uh, could be used, for example, to power his telecommunications equipment. The key, incredibly tiny carbon nanotubes, rolled up sheets of carbon atoms with extraordinary strength. We're taking these uh, individual molecules and we're assembling them into this real material, trillions of these molecules, into, into a, uh, a fiber that's about the size of a single human hair. The Texas team makes the fiber by combining nanotubes with water and a plastic. Then they spin dry the gel. Get rid of the water and they assemble into a, a polymer nanotube hybrid or a composite of a fiber which has these incredible properties. If fabric made from this fiber can be mass produced, modern chain mail could be much easier on soldiers than the original. I'm Brad Closum. Carbon nanotubes really have superior properties. They can be stronger than diamond, they conduct electricity better than copper wires, and many other beautiful properties, as you know. But before the large-scale applications in the bodies of airplanes and spacecrafts will start, we already are using them as transparent, strong, and um, highly conductive electrodes for solar cells, for uh, organic light emitting displays, highly efficient new types of lamps, and many other optoelectronic applications. So let us go to the labs and see how we use them in energy conversion systems. Once we get the carbon nanotube sheets that are processed over in the chemistry department, we bring them over here to the clean room where we're investigating new device applications. We are able to take a freestanding carbon nanotube sheet and incorporate it into electronic devices such as organic lead emitting diodes and solar cells. The carbon nanotube sheet provides a flexible alternative electrode material with the added benefit of being easy to integrate into existing device architectures. This is our organic thermal deposition machine, which we use to deposit the active organic layers on any substrate. Once the position is done, we transfer our devices through the loading log to the metal deposition chamber, where we deposit the cathodes. This prevents the device from being exposure to oxygen and moisture during the fabrication process. Here, we are testing our device for efficiency and brightness. This organic light emitting diode uses a flexible carbon nanotube sheet as a transparent anode. By applying only 10 volts, this particular device has a brightness which is as twice that of the screen that you are viewing this on. We are interested in organic solar cells over conventional silicon photovoltaic devices because they are easier and cheaper to produce. The current technology is limited by the cost of indium tin oxide, which is a standard anode material for these devices. As with organic light emitting diodes, the nanotube sheet can simply be used as a flexible replacement for indium tin oxide. However, there is an additional advantage that is to use carbon nanotubes to create a three-dimensional interpenetrating charge collecting network which further enhances the current that can be obtained from the devices. The versatility of carbon nanotube sheets can allow for other device architectures such as the disensitized solar cell shown here. This arm wrestling robot may perform like a weakling, but it's not made with the hydraulics or gears that power most of today's big strong machines. The robots losing this competition use artificial muscles, science's best attempt to mimic natural muscles. 
But University of Texas at Dallas researcher Ray Bachman says we won't have the upper hand for long. He and his team have developed artificial muscles that should put any he-man to shame. These artificial muscles are able to do over a hundred times more work per cycle than a natural muscle. They're a hundred times stronger than a natural muscle. Most robotic muscles are powered by an electrical current, but Bachman's muscles are made of an elastic metal called shape memory wire, and as he reported in the journal Science, like human muscle, it's powered by fuel. In this lab demonstration, the fuel is alcohol. It reacts with oxygen in the air and causes the artificial muscle to heat up and contract. Then they contract by a large amount. This contraction is like the contraction of our muscles in our body. The muscles then expand when the alcohol is shut off. Bachman, who works with funding from the military, says these muscles could power everything from artificial limbs and hearts to super muscles for astronauts or soldiers and maybe even self-sufficient robotic androids. On the more humorous side, perhaps in a uh, very distant future, the humanoid robot.